In this video, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our enemy spawners. So that way we have something a little more interactive to work with. So to start with, we need our enemy spawner itself. So what I'm thinking of for the enemy spawners is we're going to have them, let's say, we let's take our enemy spawner here. Let's say our enemy spawner was here and it spawned the enemy. The enemy is going to go from its starting point in the forward direction, which let's move it over here, make it easier, which would be this way. And it's going to go across and go out the other side and then destroy itself after a certain time. So to set this up, what we're going to need to do is add some projectile movement, have our enemy spawners know what they're supposed to spawn, keep track of things like that. So let's open up the enemy spawner and we need to figure out which way is forward, first of all. So I've already told you that X is normally the forward direction, so let's go ahead and make sure it's visibly easy to see. We'll go to add component arrow, and we'll just add an arrow. If we look in our viewport, now we have a giant arrow. If we go back to our VR map, you can actually see a giant arrow facing forward. So we can know at a glance that is the way we are going to spawn our enemies. Let's go ahead and move it over here. Rotate it. And then move him back. So that way we know once this works, we'll actually see a little sphere come flying at us. Let's test this and we'll see that's where the sphere starts. Okay, so we're good there. Next thing we are going to need to do is make sure our moving is working properly. So if we go in our event graph, here's our moving, which we have set to our begin play. Now we probably don't really want it in the begin play. We're going to want it in its own function. So let's make a new function and we'll call it spawn enemy and we're going to go ahead and move everything out of here into here just so that way it's all by itself and it's not going to clutter up now even though we're spawning so if we were actually to go into let's let's go to our event graph begin play and let's do spawn enemy just because again we need to test this and we run it. Okay, we're still good to go. Let's set up our movement. Now our enemy does nothing right now. It just sits there. We can add in some code. Maybe we want to lerp it over time. Maybe we want to use some interp nodes to move based on the current position or add. Or we can use the particle, particle, projectile movement, movement component. We go down to movement and we'll find projectile movement. And if we were to go ahead and hit play, we'll find, well, <laughs> it's going to have a serious issue here. It's going down. Now, why is it going down? Let's take our enemy projectile movement and let's look at a couple things. One of those issues is we have gravity turned on. Let's turn our gravity to zero and hit play again. You'll notice it now no longer does that, which is good. We're not falling to the ground, but we're not really doing much here. What we're going to need to do is adjust the projectile movement so that way it actually moves. So projectile movement. Now we have initial speed and max speed. Because we're not using gravity, we're going to set up our initial and max speed to move our character or our enemy. A couple things to keep in mind here. Let's go ahead and set the initial and max speed to 200 as a starting value. And then let's make sure down here under velocity, we have our X set to one. If you're using the speeds, then the velocity determines the direction. Since we've set up our projectile movement to go in the X direction, because remember our spawner is set to spawn in the X direction, which I think I've actually got that backwards. Let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure. No, nope. okay, that's right. Yeah. So even though that looks like it's rotated, our actual that's why we put the arrow there. Because keep in mind we rotated the actual thing, and that's gonna totally screw up the arrows because of world and local direction. And I just screwed it up again. Let's put this back. <laughs> there we go. That's why we added the arrow. We know that the arrow is our X direction, and we know that the enemy projectile movement is gonna go two hundred units on the X direction. So by default, you only really need to adjust these settings here. Gravity of zero, speed and max speed of 200. And as you saw when I hit play, 
boom, we have a target that's moving. That's it. As simple as that. We now actually have a moving target. That wasn't very hard. But let's actually make it a little more fun. Let's make it random. So in order to make it random, we need to adjust the initial and the max speed. Well, technically, we just need to adjust the initial. Let's set max speed to 5,000 because why not? That way, when we adjust the initial speed, we don't have to worry about hitting our max speed. So we need to set the max speed. So if we were to take our projectile movement and we were to do set, not a max, set initial speed, and we set it to a variable, we're actually going to run into a small problem. This event graph right here, and let's say we did it in the begin play. This event graph fires after the item is constructed. And if you're using projectile movement, the initial speed is set during construction. So if you try to set the initial speed after it's been spawned, for example, in the begin play, and you assign a random value to it, it's not going to work. The nice thing is, if we take those values, move over to our construction script, and attempt to set it in our construction script, we're actually going to find it works fine. Now we're going to need to obviously pass in an initial speed, so we're going to need a variable for that. So let's type in initial speed. Set this to a float. It's going to do a bunch of changing and all this annoying stuff. You can ignore that. It's because I set up as a float, a boolean, and then changed it. There we go. Initial speed. Let's set our default value when we save this to 200 because we liked 200. And that's it. Now, at this point in time, if I change this value to, let's go with 4,000 and hit play, it's going to be 200. If I change it to 0, it's going to be 200. During the construction of this projectile, this sphere, it is setting the initial speed to the value of this variable that I've set. So we're halfway there. Now we want to be able to actually set this when we spawn it. And that's super simple. Under the initial speed, in our details panel, we have a few options. If we do editable and expose on spawn, whenever we spawn this enemy, it's going to allow us to change this value immediately. What's that mean? Let's go back to our enemy spawner, spawn enemy, and you'll notice we now have a new value we can put in here called initial speed. Before we didn't have that, and now we do, and if you notice, it's also set to the default. Well, what can we do about that? Well, let's, let's expose our speeds to our spawner, so that way our level designer can actually set up variable speeds on our enemies. Let's make a enemy speed min. Change it to a float. Let's go ahead and make an enemy speed Whoops, enemy speed max. Make sure it's a float. Let's set our max speed to, I don't know. Let's go with 350 as a value. And let's set our minimum speed to 200. Let's make these editable. And what this is going to do is allow us to change them inside the spawner itself. And let's go ahead and plug these in. We're going to get the minimum. We're going to get the maximum. We're going to do random float and range between the minimum and the maximum and set that as our speed. Now, whenever we spawn, we're going to get a value between our minimum and our maximum. See how it's a little bit slower, a little bit faster, and we're going to get a value between our minimum and maximum. And the nice thing since we've exposed this is on our Enemy spawner here under default. Let's you know let's let's rename those appropriately. Let's give them a category called setup. And our enemy speed will change to setup. Compile and look, and there we go. Now we have a setup category where we can change our minimum and maximum. If we were to let's say duplicate this over here and hit play, we can actually change this one, 200 to 350. Let's make this one super slow. Let's make it between 50 and 100. Hit play. And there we go. 
This spawner will only spawn things between 50 and 100 units. And I'll reset those so I don't keep that. And then this spawner spawns between 200 and 350. And as many spawners as you have, you can change the individual speeds. So now we've got some spawners with some moving targets. We are good to go. Now, if I was to take, and we're going to set this up in an example. Let me pull these out and pull this one out. And let's, let's pull this out farther and hit play. And you'll notice we now have our spears coming in. And you'll notice that it's not colliding. And all we need to really care about is these little red arrows that show us where they spawn. Let's actually move this one up a little bit. Let's try that. Okay. We're going to go ahead and test, make sure our things work. And to do that is pretty simple. We're just going to want to call spawn enemy repeatedly. So the nice thing about this is we won't do that. We will do a timer by function. We're going to call this timer spawn enemy. We're going to call this every three seconds and set it to loop. And we'll go ahead and hit play. And now, of course, I broke it because Oh, how did I break this? Spawn enemy, right? Yep. Oh, I love this stuff. Wait, where'd the enemy script go? Event graph, begin play. Set timer by function name, spawn enemy. Time three, looping. Oh, because, because the time set to three. I have to wait three seconds for the first spawn. <laughs> there we go. Silly, silly, silly thing. But you notice we now have targets that are firing every three seconds. We have different ranges. I have no way of knowing. Let's see. Let's see if we can aim at. Let's see. There we go. Whoop. Got one. All right. Got one. Got it too. If I was to actually aim at the other one somehow. Let's try what the spawn right around here. There we go. See. So now we've got targets that are moving. We can hit them, our score is going up. We can adjust the speeds. So basically we have a targeting system set up. Now it's a little bit basic. We're gonna want to actually make it a little more advanced. And in our next video, we're basically going to create some interfaces and make our game mode actually control our spawning. We're gonna be able to control how many enemies spawn per wave how many waves there are total and then it's based and it's going to pull from all of our spawners where it's going to spawn from so it's going to be random so you'll be able to just basically pepper your level with spawners tell it how many you want to spawn and when you want it to spawn and then the game mode is going to go ahead and take care of the rest